the most difficult things that I find in my special education law practice, Julie, is when a family calls me or I'm already representing the family and the student has been placed in a hospital for psychiatric reasons. Yeah. It's a tough thing to see. It's a very difficult time for any family to go through, especially the, the child or the adolescent who's also hospitalized. And so we want to bring some clarity as to how to go about it when your child has been hospitalized for psychiatric, emotional, or behavioral reasons. And you know, Jen, I find um, in my practice as a special education advocate that not only is the family most often in crisis um, when your child has been hospitalized for these reasons, but that there can sometimes be a very large disconnect right. between the hospital Right. and then going back to the school. So you've got the medical model, right. and how does that translate into the educational model? Yeah. And so this um, whole area that we're going to talk about will hopefully bring clarity to how to go about that. It, it is so confusing, and one of the reasons is that there is an eligibility category under the IDEA, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, referred to as an emotional disturbance. In mm. some states they call it a serious emotional disability or an emotional disability. It has some slight variations in Depending different states. Depending on the state you live in. Right, mm. but that's the federal language is an emotional disturbance. And what I find so often is that many families have no idea that if their child's education is being adversely impacted by an emotional disability, that that is in fact special education, right. um, provided the criteria are met. And what I think is really, what I'm finding over the years is that this eligibility category category is probably the most undetected and underserved population of disability in my experience. And part right. of the reason is not even knowing what to do from that, from that first crisis onward, right. and that's what we're hoping we can help with. Not to mention the fact that unfortunately in this country there is still some shame yeah. that is associated with mental illness. Yes. And um, I think that probably contributes to perhaps the fact that it's underserved because many Absolutely. times families are ashamed yes. and they don't even know if they should tell their school and they may in fact keep it from their school thinking they're protecting Absolutely. their child. And, and so th this is a very tough area to navigate very. from that psychiatric hospitalization going forward. We're going to give you some tools about that. I think the other reason this is an underserved population is that many, many students who have emotional disabilities also are very bright and do well on standardized testing. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they slip under the radar. And right. um, as we talk about all the time, education is more than just academics right. under the special education laws. So right. this is um, our conversation about that.